All right, so in this video, I want to talk a little bit more. Um, well, I want to start by talking a little bit more about this um, n operator, right? Bound equals x and l. And so rather than using that operator that's built into Python, I wrote some code here that basically does the same thing. Uh, what do we do? We take in a list, l, and I've already drawn what that might look like. Um, we take in a target that we're searching for. We loop over l, and then if we find it, we return true. When we give up, we return false. And so for this particular one, um, rather than trying to break it all into steps and count each step, I'm just interested in let's counting this step right here. How many times does line of A execute uh, in kind of the worst case, best case? And for these different cases, worst case, best case, I can actually think about, well, what is my target, right? So I think in the worst case, right? Well, remember, as soon as I find it, right, I return, right? So Maybe let's actually start with the best case. The best case is that I have eight, right? If I have eight, I'm done really fast, right? Uh, I only look at one thing. So the best case, I have one. Um, in the worst case, well, what does that mean? In the worst case, I guess I would have to loop over everything. So maybe, maybe that means something like five, right? Is at the end, or or maybe something like you know negative one's not not even there. I guess I would kind of uh you know run off the list too so worst case i may have to look at n things and then the average case well what is that i guess that's somewhere in the middle of the list approximately and that would be about n over two steps and, and so sometimes they'll be asked for different uh different of these right unless somebody specifies then what they're really asking for is the worst case right um maybe people are interested in the pathological case that was often easier to reason about Every once in a while, somebody might ask you about the average case, and that might make a lot, a lot of sense too, right? I mean, if you have a bunch of kind of representative uh, things you're looking up, maybe you care overall what the average is instead of what the worst is. Okay, so we've had a lot of examples that are either constant time or um, order n. Um, let's talk a little bit about sorting. Um, the way you've typically sorted things, if you have a list, is you might say l dot sort and it happens uh, but somebody somebody had to write that function right and there's different ways people write sort functions and i have one example here maybe the easiest one to understand and um and our goal right is to start with a list like this and when it's all done it should look like this on the right things are in alphabetical order and um, our strategy is going to be this before we even look at the code uh, we're going to loop over the whole list and, and find the largest item and, and try to put the smallest here, right? So the, the smallest item will go here. We're gonna loop over the remaining items and put the second smallest here. Loop over the remaining two, put the smallest here, um, and, and so on and so forth. That's a strategy, right? Just figure out one value um, at a time. And so when I'm looking at this code, what do I see that's going on here? Um, one, uh, let me look at kind of the heart of it. I have this weird assignment with two values on each side. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to take this value and put it to here. It's going to take this value and put it to here. And it does those two things at exactly the same time. So I actually see that since this is going to here, going to here, you know what, those are the same two things. So really it's just swapping the values at position i and the values at, um, at this index min. It just swaps those two values. And, and that's a fast operation, right? Kind of swapping values in a list is, is fast. Uh, you know, compared to like say like adding and removing something at the beginning. This loop is kind of like we're looping over all the positions to figure out what goes there. You know, first time at position zero, what goes in position zero? Well, to decide, I have to loop over from position, you know, zero until the end. Next time on this loop, I'm at position one, so I loop from position one until the end to find out what what goes there. So what's going to happen as this uh, code is running is I've kind of drawn it out. I have my i here and my j here, and I'm just going to draw um, a little dot or some symbol every time this code here runs, right? And I'm going to draw the dot to show where what my i and j values are when that runs. So in the first pass, I'm going to kind of loop over, you know, for i equals zero, right? That's that outer loop up here. I'm going to loop and I'm going to do that one, that one that one, that one. And what I'm gonna find is that A is the smallest value. And so what that means is that A should switch with B 
be in the first place, right? So A, A should go, oops, let me see. A should go to here and B should go to here. Okay, next path, so I is one. When I is one, what do we do? We loop in our J loop from one until the end, right? So I'm gonna loop here, here, here. And I guess B is already the smallest value, so B gets to stay there. Okay, now I wanna figure out what goes here, right? So I is two, and I'm gonna loop over positions two and three to figure out which is smaller. Is this smaller or this smaller? And and of course, C is smaller, right? So I'm gonna swap C and D. And C goes here. C goes here, and then D goes here. And, and then when I'm all done, I guess the way I've written it is I do something here, even though of course I'm not trying to do any swaps. And, and so what I want you to see here, right, is if I'm trying to count the total number of steps, right, well, what do I get? I get, well, in this case, I get four plus three plus two plus one. I guess in general, I get something like n plus dot, 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 and then one. And so what is the complexity of this, right? How much work am I doing? And, and the work is kind of represented by this triangle. And what I want you to notice that is the triangle is half of a square, right? So really the complexity is n squared over two. And what we've learned is that given we can have c's, we can ignore those constant factors. So the complexity here is just n squared. And, um, and you can actually do faster than that for sorting, but that's kind of uh, a lot of the easy to understand sort algorithms are, are n squared.